The law of use goes something like this. Whatever you don't use, you lose. If you tie your arm to your body and leave it there long enough, you'll never use it again. It's over for the arm. It may not be over for you, but it's over for the arm. The only way to keep the use of this arm is to keep using it. If you quit, you lose automatically. They don't bring it up for a vote. You lose automatically when you quit. Now, the same principle that applies to your arm applies to your brain and mentality. The same goes for all human virtues. Ambition, unused, declines. Strong feelings, unused, diminish. Today, unused, is lost. Talent, unused, is lost. And ability, unused, is lost. So here's one of the key expressions of the evening. Take a new inventory of yourself starting tomorrow. New project. Take a new inventory and make sure that all of your talent, ability, mentality, ingenuity, vitality, strong feelings, faith, and courage are being used. Otherwise, you lose. One of the best illustrations of the law of use is a Bible story called the Parable of the Talents. It's an interesting story. If you haven't read it in a while, review it. The ancient story says there was a master with three servants. He gathered them together one day and said to the three, I've got these talents. In those ancient days, a talent was a measure of gold. He said, take these talents and see what you can do with them while I'm gone. I'm taking a journey and will be gone for a while. When I come back, we'll get together and go over the results. Here's five talents for you, five. Here's two talents for you, two. And here's one talent for you, one. Take those talents and see what you can do with them. The master took off, and according to the ancient story, when he returned, he gathered the three servants together and asked how they did with the talents. The servant who received five talents said, I took the five talents you gave me and put them to work. It was a little shaky at first, but things finally got rolling. I poured it on and my talents grew to seven, eight, nine, ten. I doubled my talents from five to ten. The master said, one heck of a job. The servant who received two talents said, about the same thing happened to me. I put those two talents to work, poured it on, and they grew to three and then to four. I doubled my talents from two to four. The master said, well done. The servant who received one talent said, I took the talent you gave me, carefully wrapped it, dug a hole, and buried it. I camouflaged it, I suppose, so nobody would steal it. Fortunately, nobody got it. I knew you were coming today, so I dug it up. Here it is, safely wrapped. I did not lose it while you were gone. According to the ancient story, the master said, take that talent away from him and give it to the man who has 10. And you might say, well, I don't like that arrangement. The poor guy's only got one talent and he's already got 10. It should be more even. Remember, I didn't ask you to like it, but I do ask you to learn from it. It simply means that whatever you do not employ, you forfeit. It's a law. Let's talk about a powerful word, value. Here's a phrase to keep in mind. Value makes the difference in results. You see, you can't get more time, but you can absolutely create more value. Here's the first lesson in economics that everyone should learn as soon as they understand the value of a dollar. How to earn one, how to get one, how to keep one, and what to do with it. The first lesson is simple. We get paid for the value we bring to the marketplace. That's lesson one. Bringing value is how you earn your keep. It's not about the time. It's about the value you provide. So let's ask a critical question. Can you become twice as valuable in the marketplace and make twice as much money in the same amount of time? Can you become three times as valuable and make three times as much money in the same time? The answer is a resounding yes. If, and it's always an if, right? Life is known for its ifs. As Harry Truman said, life is iffy. Here's the big if for tonight. You can do much better in the marketplace if you focus on working on yourself first. That's our theme tonight, learning to work primarily on yourself. For the past 24 years, people have asked me how to develop an above average income. The answer is straightforward. Become an above average person. Start with your handshake. Develop an above average handshake. It's astonishing how many people overlook this simple step. They don't work on their handshake, even though it's an easy way to start. Develop an above average smile, an above average enthusiasm, an above average interest in others, and an above average drive to succeed. 
That's how you make the difference. One of the most frustrating things in life is searching for an above average job with above average pay without becoming an above average person. It's a recipe for frustration. Mr. Schoff gave me a crucial piece of advice when I first met him. He said, Jim, if you want to be wealthy and happy for the rest of your life, learn this lesson well. Work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Here's what can easily happen if you don't set goals. It's easy to let life deteriorate into making a living instead of designing a life. We all have a choice, make a living or design a life. It's easy to get trapped by economic necessity and settle for existence rather than substance. That's easy, but the best advice I can give you on how to break out of that trap is to learn how to set goals. He said, I think you're much smarter than your present bank balance indicates. And that turned out to be true. I was much smarter, but of course my first question was, well then why isn't it bigger? He said, you don't have enough reasons. You've got enough intelligence, but not enough reasons. So see, reasons can change your life. Here's what else I found out. Reasons come first, answers come second. You don't get the answers to do well until you get the reasons. Life has a mysterious way of holding on to all the answers and only gives them up to the people who are inspired by reasons. So reasons make the difference in how your life works out. Now, what are some of the reasons for doing well? Let's go through a quick list called reasons for doing well. First are personal reasons. Some people do well for recognition, some for respect, and some for the way it makes them feel. They love the feeling of being a winner. Those are good reasons. I have some millionaire friends who keep working 10 to 12 hours a day, making more millions, and it's not because they need the money. It's because they need the joy, satisfaction, and pleasure that come from being a constant winner. See, it's not just the money anyway, it's the journey, not the money. Once in a while, somebody says to me, boy, if I had a million dollars, I'd never work another day in my life. That's probably why the good Lord sees to it. They don't get their million, right? They'd quit. They'd quit. Next is the family reason. Some people do extremely well for others, and that's powerful. Human beings can greatly affect each other. Sometimes we will do things for somebody else that we will not do for ourselves. We're made that way. I met a man once who said, Mr. Roan, to do all the things I want to do with my family around the world, I've got to have at least a quarter of a million dollars a year. I thought, incredible. Could a family affect a person that much? And the answer is, of course. How fortunate are the people who find themselves greatly affected by somebody for personal achievement? We are affected. Furthermore, there are some additional reasons for doing well. Legacy and impact. Some people are driven by the desire to leave a legacy or make a significant impact on the world. They want to be remembered for their contributions and influence future generations positively. Personal growth. The pursuit of excellence and success often leads to personal growth and self-improvement. Some individuals are motivated by the challenge of pushing their limits and realizing their full potential. Freedom and independence. Achieving financial success can provide the freedom and independence to make choices that align with one's values and desires. For some, it's about having the ability to control their own life and make decisions without constraints. Making a difference. Many are motivated by the desire to make a difference in the lives of others. This could be through charitable work, improving their community, or solving problems that affect others. Passion and enjoyment. For some, Success comes from pursuing their passions and doing what they love. They find fulfillment in engaging in activities that they are passionate about and enjoy. Recognition and achievement. Achieving success and recognition can be a strong motivator. The acknowledgement of one's hard work and accomplishments can drive individuals to pursue and achieve more. Security and stability. Financial security and stability can be powerful motivators. Some people are driven by the need to provide for themselves and their families, ensuring a stable and secure future. Challenge and competition. The desire to compete and overcome challenges can be a strong motivator. For some, the thrill of competition and the challenge of beating the odds drive them to succeed. Each of these reasons can provide a strong foundation for setting and achieving goals helping individuals to stay motivated and focused on their path to success. 
Join the top 3%. Take charge of your life. Take charge of your day, your conversations, your family, and your possibilities. Step away from the 95% and join the 3%, the 10%, the 5%. In our Leadership Weekend, we teach a vital lesson. Discover what poor people read and don't read it. Don't talk like they talk. Don't fall into their poor philosophical traps. Don't blame what they blame. Don't use the excuses they use. It's called the language of the poor. Switch gears, switch language, switch ideas, switch strategies. Start with the simplest of disciplines. Even the smallest of disciplines can kickstart the process of life change. If you invest in this thing called discipline, you can achieve whatever you wish. It's the beginning of a miracle. Now here's the last clue on discipline. Do the best you can. We discussed earlier that doing your best is crucial, but here's a deeper look. Ask yourself, is the best you can do all you can do? The answer is no. If we all dropped to the floor and did as many push-ups as possible, and let's say the best you could do is five, it's not all you can do. With a bit of rest, you could do five more. Rest a little more and you could do five more after that. You might even get up to 50 push-ups. How do you go from five to 50? It's a miracle. But miracles are made through effort. Number one, do what you can. Don't skip out on the small tasks from writing a letter to your mother to doing push-ups. Number two, do the best you can. Number three, rest very little. Don't rest too long. Remember, weeds take over the garden if you rest too long. Make rest a necessity, not an objective. The goal is not to rest, but to act. Think of more disciplines. More ways to use your wisdom, philosophy, attitude, faith, courage, commitment, and excitement. Invest it all in discipline so it's not wasted. The smallest discipline can transform your life. Join the 5%, the 10%, the 3%. The numbers don't change, only the faces do. Take seriously the next conversation with a friend who wants to level with you and take action. You can walk away from the 97% and change your life. Otherwise, the next six years will look just like the last six. Mr. Schauff once said to me, Jim, the next six years of your life will be like the last six unless you start making personal changes. I made those changes and it revolutionized my life. Look at the next five years of your life. They'll be like the last five unless you decide to change. And if you do, everything will change. Join the 5% and 10 years from now, the numbers will still be the same. But some faces in this audience can shift to the 3% the 5% and the 10% and dynamically affect their lives and futures. Develop these strengths and make the change. Get serious, life is serious. Whether you win or lose, whether you succeed or fail, and whether you carve out a good future for yourself or you don't. These are not trivial matters. They are profound and impactful. Matters of the heart are serious. Matters of income are serious and supporting your family is serious. So the first thing I want to emphasize is this. Get serious. Understand that the stakes are high and your approach to life needs to reflect that. Next, get smart. This is what journals, pads, and pencils are for. They're tools designed to enhance your ability to comprehend and utilize life transforming ideas and information. Don't miss the opportunity to learn and grow. Take a valuable key phrase from your experiences and incorporate it into your training and daily practice. Don't fall into the trap of laziness or casualness in learning. Instead, immerse yourself in gaining knowledge and skills. Reflect deeply on your personal experiences. If you've had a challenging week, take the time to sit down and analyze it. Consider what went wrong and what lessons you can draw from it. Use these insights to make the following week better. In addition, focus on getting stronger. This means developing your courage, your inspiration, and your dedication. You have the power to build these muscles and enhance your resilience. There is no one here who cannot become stronger. Imagine the next time we meet, you might be so transformed that you're unrecognizable in terms of your growth in language, style, personality, and your ability to handle life's challenges. For things to get better, you must get better yourself. Don't ask for the world to change around you. Instead, ask for yourself to change from within. 
Seeking external changes like a more favorable wind or better conditions is naive. You need to focus on improving yourself because this is the only planet you have to work with. I improve myself day by day, week by week, and month by month, and I'm asking you to do the same. Develop a long arm and a long reach. Build an influence that won't waver. Touch people now who you couldn't reach before and conduct meetings with a level of proficiency you didn't have previously. Infuse your efforts with heart and soul where they were lacking before. I'm urging you all to get better despite any downturns, be they financial, social, or personal. Regardless of the obstacles you face, just keep getting stronger and better. As Brian Tracy often emphasizes, if you want to change, you must take action. Take action now and make the necessary changes to transform your life.